Woman removes ovarian cyst containing hair and bones. A British woman had been suffering from extremely painful periods ever since she was 15. Callie Hack told Business Insider that every month leading up to her period, she would have a ton of bloating and inflammation, crazy lower back pain, blackouts, hot and cold flashes, and fits of dry heaving, and a nice coppery taste in her mouth to top it all off. Doctors told her that some people just have more painful periods than others, but when she got into her 20s, the symptoms got even worse. Finally, five doctors and an ultrasound later, Hack discovered she actually had an orange-sized dermoid cyst on her right ovary. Dermoid cysts are sac-like growths comprised of hair, teeth, skin, bone, or cartilage. According to the American Journal of Scientific Research, ovarian dermoid cysts are usually present at birth, but don't develop until the reproductive years. Hack finally had the cyst removed in November of 2017, which her doctor said looked like a rotten chicken wing. Mmm. Binge watching Tomo is good for your health. Man in vegetative state responds to treatment. After being in a vegetative state for 15 years, a French man is showing some signs of consciousness after neurosurgeons implanted a vagus nerve stimulator in his chest. Researchers wanted to test the ability of vagus nerve stimulation to restore consciousness in a person in a vegetative state. Vagus nerve stimulation begins with implanting a device in the chest and running a wire under the skin. This wire connects the vagus nerve and the device. The device sends electrical pulses along the nerve to the brainstem, which in turn transmits these impulses to certain brain areas. Researchers found that after one month of stimulation, the patient's attention, movements, and brain activity significantly improved. The scientists are now planning a larger study to confirm and extend the potential of vagus nerve stimulation. Limitless blood supply is not too far off. It's taken nearly two decades, but scientists may finally have the recipe to create stem cells, that wellspring of life and holy grail of regenerative medicine. A Boston research team programmed human pluripotent stem cells to become endothelial cells, which typically line the inside of blood vessels. These were injected with special proteins called transcription factors, then transplanted into mice. Weeks later, the cells had multiplied and in some cases formed a wide range of human blood cells in the mice's bodies. A second research team used blood cells from mice and injected them with a mix of transcription factors. The cells morphed into stem cells after incubating in petri dishes designed to mimic a human blood vessel environment. When injected into weak mice that had been treated with radiation, the stem cells regenerated both blood and immune cells. The mice recovered and went on to live full lifespans. The groundbreaking research from both teams provides hope for patients who suffer from blood cancers and other diseases. But tests need to be carried out to determine any negative effects before the procedure can go to human trials. Fetal pacemaker ready for human trials. Researchers at the University of Southern California first developed a micro pacemaker for fetuses five years ago, and the device is now ready for its first human trial. The fetal pacemaker is a slim cylinder with components that include a single transistor relaxation oscillator, an epoxy capsule, and a small lithium battery. The pacemaker is implanted into a fetus through a 3.8 millimeter diameter insertion cannula. The battery is able to power the device for about a week. When the power runs low, a high-powered field generator can be used to generate a radio frequency magnetic field outside the body. This wirelessly recharges the battery through inductive coupling. The device, which has been successfully tested in sheep fetuses in the past, was granted humanitarian use in 2015 by the FDA. Man's paralyzed limb reanimated with the help of a brain chip. A team from Ohio has made a medical breakthrough, successfully developing technology that allows brain signals to bypass a spinal injury and transmit straight to the muscles. When Ian Burkhart broke his neck four years ago, it damaged his spinal cord and left him paralyzed from the chest down. He retained some movement in his shoulders and biceps, but lost sensation in his hands and legs. To help him, doctors inserted a chip the size of an eraser head into his motor cortex, the area of the brain that controls hand movements. 
The chip records brain signals for specific hand movements and sends these to a computer via a port on the back of Burkhardt's head. Once the signals are decoded, they're transmitted to an arm sleeve studded with electrodes. The electrodes stimulate the muscles and allow them to move. The system, called NeuroLife, has allowed Burkhardt to make six different hand and wrist motions. It marks the first time a paralyzed man has been able to regain movement using recorded brain signals. Paralyzed man stands again after experimental treatment. A man paralyzed from a bad accident has regained the ability to stand and move his legs after receiving an experimental epidural treatment. Andrew Mies was paralyzed from the chest down after his spine was broken at the 6th and 7th cervical vertebrae in a motorcycle accident nearly 10 years ago. Mies has spent four years in physical rehabilitation, but has also been receiving an experimental treatment called spinal cord epidural stimulation. The device sends electrical signals to motor neurons telling them to move. At the end of the study, Mies was able to move his legs, stand on both feet or one foot entirely on his own. The results from the study show that the nervous system may be more resilient than previously thought. Brit has world's worst case of supergonorrhea. What happens in Bangkok stays in Bangkok, unless it's a case of superclap. A man in the UK has been diagnosed with the world's worst ever case of supergonorrhea that is resistant to first choice antibiotics. The man picked it up after a sexual encounter with a woman in Southeast Asia. Health officials say it's the first time the infection was unable to be treated with a combination of azithromycin and ceftriaxone antibiotics. The infection is caused by the bacterium in Neisseria gonorrhea. It's spread through unprotected sex. Symptoms can include a thick green or yellow discharge from sexual organs, pain urinating, and bleeding between periods. If left untreated, it can cause infertility, pelvic inflammatory disease, and can be spread to children during pregnancy. Physicians now have the men on one last antibiotic, but will have to wait until next month to see if it works at combating the infection.